Good to have you, man. How are you? I'm good, Jared. I'm good. Happy to be here. Excited to be linking back up with you, man. Dude, it's been a minute. I love the, I love what I've been seeing on LinkedIn lately. So we'll give you, uh, for those that don't know, Kevin Dorsey led multiple sales teams. You're now in what, a new position leading sales at Patient Pop? Uh, yep. So I'm the VP of Inside Sales here at Patient Pop. So kind of taking over the inside sales machine as we go chase that $100 million revenue. And um, I think I'm about 45 people right now. We'll be scaling it up to about 100 in the next year and just, just dominating, just getting after it. Love it. Give us a quick, I guess, for those that don't know, I'm actually pretty new to it, but tell us about Patient Pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Patient Pop is a practice management and marketing software. So the way I like to describe it, it helps good doctors get found. So a lot of the doctors that are in like private practice, you know, they're, they're doctors. They're not necessarily business people or marketers. And so it allows them to market their practice better so they can get found by people that are looking for them and also just a much better patient experience. You know, finding a good doctor, that's, that's an intimate process. Like this is someone who's going to be recommending some probably serious life changes or like recommendations. And so it gives a better patient experience too, better reviews, easy scheduling, easy follow-up. So it kind of helps both sides, which I like. It's not just helping the doctors. It's also helping patients find the right doctors. And so I'm pumped. I'm bought in. I love the mission. I love who we're selling to. And I'm very excited. Uh, what's the number one mistake that a sales leader can, uh, can make during a coaching session? Number one mistake, I'm, I'm going to give you two here. So I'm going to go off script already. But I like it. one is just not doing coaching. I and mean, let's just be point blank. Most sales managers and teams don't actually do sales coaching. So that's the first mistake. But the ones that are in a coaching session, I think the biggest mistake they make is just overwhelm. They just, they just, they try to coach on everything. Here's all the things that you did wrong. And here's all the things that you need to do. And it's too much, right? And so it's keeping things like we're trying to do today, keep it short and sweet of like, here's what I saw. Here's the repercussions of the outcome of what I saw. Here's yep. what I think we should do moving forward and why. And keeping it to two to three things tops. Like it, you don't have to cover everything. So I'd say that's number one, covering way too much and just telling people what to do. So do coaching and keep it simple, keep it short. Is there a right cadence or like a, a right amount of like, you know, manager to rep touch points. Like how, how should people be doing coaching and how often? Yeah. yeah. So I like every single week. So what I've built out previously and what I'll build out here is, I mean, it's weekly coaching sessions. You know, if you think about any other thing in the world you want to get good at practice is mandatory, whether that's sports, music, the, the military, whatever, like you have to do it over and over and over again. So every week I have reps listening to calls, their own calls and scoring them, managers listening to those calls and scoring them. That's where we find out what needs to be coached, go into the coaching sessions, actually do just those things. So we, I don't role play the whole call. That's not what we need to do. We role play the sections that they actually need coaching on. 30, 40 minutes, coaching, cool. Go out, do it in the real world, come back. Did you improve? Yes. Move on to the next topic. No, we're doing it all over again. Got it. Love it. Uh, question number two, you're managing a lot of people, 45, growing to hundred. How do you tailor your coaching style to the needs and personalities of like those very different people, especially across roles? How do you, how do you, how do you cater to them? It starts in the hiring process first. Like, so the, the concept of like different people and different needs, like I'm looking for people that are coachable and adaptable in the hiring process. And I have very specific things that I look for to try to gauge if someone even is coachable. So that's the, the first one. The next part of it though is personality wise. So actually, so I just did one-on-ones with every single rep here. I've been locked in a room for almost the past two weeks talking. And one of the questions I asked them is how do you like to be communicated with and how do you learn the best? Like I'm asking this in the first week that I've ever met these individuals and that helps me tailor. Some people like, yo, KD, just tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. I'll go do it. I don't need the fluff. Other people are like, hey, like I need to know why, what you saw, some examples, other experiences, a book reference, cite the material, like, you know, they need the whole story. Yeah. But now I know that about my entire team from my first two weeks, I already know what those styles are, which now allows me to work with their managers to do it the right way. Um, but as we were talking about before off camera, 
a lot of what I've been reading and studying over the past years on the science of learning and the concept that people have different learning styles is actually a little bit disproven or unproven that people actually learn better visually or learn better through audio or kinesthetic. People have preferences, but there's actually no proof that people learn better in those ways. And so it's important that you have all of this. So that's why the coaching section has review, mm -hmm. hear it, instruction, hear it, best practice libraries, hear it, shadowing, see it, and then the practice to do it. So we encapsulate all of it in there, whether they prefer one or the other, doesn't matter. You need to do all of them. What's that Chinese proverb I, I heard and I forgot, I saw and I remember what I did and I understood. They're pretty, yeah. pretty well online. Yep. Boom. Number three, and this is a good one. Sometimes there's some uh, you know, bad habits of the team. So you talk about you know, one on ones as a new leader is amazing. You're learning how do you want to be you know, uh, conversed with? How do you learn? That's awesome. So, what are your tried and true methods for helping a rep change a bad selling habit? And how do you use data to ensure that's being effective? So most people don't understand how you break a habit, right? And I think even the word break a habit is why pe most people can't. You don't break a habit. You actually don't break a habit. You have to create a new and stronger habit. And that's where people go wrong is they try to break it. Stop doing this. That's not how habits work. You actually have to create a new habit in place of it. And that only comes from repetition and direction. And that works for all habits, whether you're trying to quit smoking, change your diet, change how you do things, whatever. If you don't create a new habit to replace it, that neural pathway is so strong in the brain. So you can't break it. So that's the first thing. So you don't break habits. You have to replace it with a new habit. And that comes from clarity. Okay, what is that habit going to be? AKA, what do I want you to do now? That's repetition, repetition, repetition. Why, right? And how to do it. So that's, I guess, what it is, is it's recognizing what the new habit needs to be and then putting in the work to get there. And that comes from role plays, that comes from reviews. And as you know, talk about data, like I'm a huge um, call scorecard believer because that is data. And it, it shows me that the difference between sounding good and being good, yep. right? Like everyone loves to say, man, that rep, that demo sounded good. Okay, but you scored zero out of 10 for the closing section. So now I'm using data to drive my coaching and then the coaching to see if the data improved, right? So if a rep struggling with closing, the first question I'll ask a manager is where their call scoring right now, where are they scoring and what section is the lowest? Now they know where to coach and they can come back to me a month later and said, Hey, they were averaging two out of 10 on the closing section month of role plays and practice and call reviews. They're now averaging six. So I can numerically show that this rep got better in the areas that they need to. That's awesome. Um, that's super impressive, man. Um, in, 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 in respect to the marketing team, we're going to, uh, we're going to wrap it, but I can talk to you literally all day. Uh, Jared from ambition, Kevin at patient pop is about to do some, some pretty awesome stuff over there. Uh, oh, yeah. thanks man. I really appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Absolutely.